I wonder what it'd be like to visit everywhere on the board. In this series we attempt to visit every square on the New Zealand Monopoly board and in this particular episode our travel quest is to complete the community chest. just pulled over for the first time we're absolutely starving hungry we picked up a couple of pies I believe New Zealand are very well known for their quality pies just pulled by a little lay by very lovely pie mm. 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 really good as recommended we've stopped by the honey center en route to our destination today. Looking forward to getting some really nice honey we wear, Chris. <laughs> and it's open seven days, as you can see in the background, except not today. It's shut. So today must be, <laughs> today must be the eighth day or something like that. <gasps> so now we have actually got a bit of a challenge um, to turn around because we're a bit stuck. You can't go forwards. Um, we're in a vehicle over seven meters the wrong way round. And I'm not looking forward to this because this looks like a quite a narrow bridge I've got to cross through, which is full of water. Thanks, Honey Centre. <laughs> <laughs> Looks interesting, isn't it? Is this like an open shower? Awesome. Okay, so there's outdoor showers here um, with this cord. Any idea what this is for? <laughs> Write in the comments below. Oh my god. Is it a long drop? There's a long drop. Because there's no flush. Okay. Right, on closer inspection of the toilet, and just to put your mind at rest, there's a very long drop and there's no flush. I mean, it's all very clean and tidy. Good morning. It didn't all go according to plan our first night. Unfortunately, the gas ran out and we didn't even get to cook a meal, heat any water. We didn't need heating. And did I mention that it rained through the night and even this morning? Anyway, um, we're gonna have to try and source another gas bottle today. We only carry one. There is spare for a second one, but we only got one when we bought the vehicle. So that'll be our priority today. We've been over for a shower, <laughs> a $2 shower. Unfortunately, whilst mine worked perfectly, Peg's didn't, so she just ended up with a cold shower. So it wasn't very nice. Anyway, let's see if we can get another gas bottle today. We've just spent our first night in our new motorhome in New Zealand. Yeah, we drove yesterday from Auckland to Uratiti on State Highway 1, up the east side of the North Island. We stayed overnight at a... <laughs> I can't remember the words. Department of Conservation. We stayed overnight at a... 
We stayed overnight at a Department of Conservation. Cunt. I can't even. <laughs> we tried saying this three times. Yeah. We should we do it together? Yeah. We, we stayed, stayed overnight. In, I can't even say it myself. There's no way we can say it together. We, 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 we stayed overnight. We stayed overnight in a Department of Conservation campsite at a price of $15 each for the night. So that was $30 in total. This Department of Conservation campsite is an open campsite and you can park anywhere you like. There's loads of space. Providing it's not waterlogged. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a lot that is. The DOC manages more than 200 campsites throughout New Zealand in fabulous settings. Beaches, forests and mountains. <laughs> 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 I made that last one up. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably true. I'm sure there's mountains <laughs> as well. <laughs> <laughs> van was literally an hour ago was in pristine white condition it now looks like it's been rallied through some RAC forest Peg where are we we're at Waipu Caves we're at Waipu Caves and we've seen lots of people coming back drenched muddy as but it's very cold it's very mm. cold oh so do Ah. You wear the shoes yeah. in because so it's rocks. You can see from the wet, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Here? Wetness, right here? So do you have to go through water then? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think your shoes are fine. Like two or three times. Okay. And at the end, you turn off the lights. It's like it's all there. the star in the light. We had to lower ourselves into the cave using a very muddy rope. It was absolutely pitch black and I did have a head torch on. I was told by the people who'd been there before us that you needed to switch your head torch off to be able to see the glow worms. We ventured further into the cave and waded through the water before turning the lights off to see the glow worms all around us. Waipu Caves. Come to the Waipu Caves, they said. Well, I'll tell you now. Make sure you're not wearing any footwear that you ever want to uh, use again. That was a bit squelchy to say the least, and it's pretty muddy out here too. caves. Now unfortunately access to it and away from it is all via gravel roads. There's no actual cart tarmac. So we're in Bunnings and we come for a sponge, a bowl, a bucket and some gas. Let's see if we get lucky today. 
Well, we've just found a cafe in Bunnings and enjoying a vegan carrot cake and two flat whites. I've got the little one. Bunnings is just like B and Q. I think it's an Australian and a Kiwi store, but the main difference is there's more staff and they seem happy. Well, there's loads of staff here. We've noticed that generally in the stores, there's lots of staff, so there's plenty of people to ask if you need any help or assistance. This is Gas Bottles New Zealand Stone. Very easy to screw on. So simple, much better than the spanner that I can never get to work back in the UK. The weather's sort of turned against us somewhat. Yes, it's business, business as usual because the weather's been like this virtually every day for a number of days now. Um, we've stopped here because we want to go to a shop called Briscoe's. We've been trying to get a kitchen knife and we couldn't get one in the B&Q equivalent place. So we've been told that Briscoe's, which is a, like a homeware type store, sells them. So we're going to try there. The only catch is it's absolutely hammering down with rain yet again. Right, while we're waiting for this rain to subside, and it's quite heavy at the moment, and we've had thunder and lightning, we've been looking at the free apps, and we're quite encouraged that we could choose from three different free places uh, within a quite a small location, small distance from where we are now. So this continues for any length of time. I think we might not be going much further today. There are literally trolleys being blown across the car park. It looks like one's hit a car over there. I don't think any damage has been done. But uh, we've seen a few trolleys going for a walk all on their own. It's a bit bizarre. But the weather seems to be getting worse rather than better. So the danger of sitting here waiting for the storm to subside is we're making a list of even more things we're going to buy when we go into the homeware shop in a minute. Well, I say in a minute, who knows? So we're now after an ice cube tray, because that's probably the first thing we should have ever bought anyway. Um, what else are we getting, Peg? Glasses. Glasses. So we've got no glasses. So what can we put wine in and beer if we haven't got glasses? And we need a sharp knife. And we can't prepare food properly at the moment because we haven't got a sharp knife. So that's three things we've now put on our list. We've had so many things given to us by our rallies here, it's untrue. Um, but we just needed a few extra bits to top up with. So yeah, this is a dangerous day already as we've spent a fortune. But maybe that's it now, maybe that's all. We're fully done and um, we're not going to need anything else. What do you, is that likely, Peg? Uh, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll see. Anyway, we've got a while anyway to figure it all out. Let's, uh, do you think we should run across yet? Or? I think it's starting to ease off it's, a little bit. It's, it's, it's not quite as horizontal, it's more diagonal rain now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still heavy, but you know, you've got to cut cut your losses at some point and just make a run for it. Yeah, um, yeah let's do it. Let's do this. You're right. already soaked through I'm, anyway. Yeah, well, I'm already soaked through, so it makes no difference. Let's do this. Yeah. So it's gone from torrential to just very blowy and a little a little bit of uh, wetness. Oh dear. Yeah, we just have to set tumblers, two glasses for wine or beer, and they're incredibly expensive. You know, just a simple glass, like about nine pounds. Anyway, we found two really cheap ones for about three quid. Three pound each. So um, I mean, there's ones like that you buy in IKEA for, for like fifty pence or something. <laughs> They're about four quid here. Um, yeah, really, really expensive. But you know, that's the pound. Most most of them were about eighteen ninety nine. Yeah, there's eighteen dollars ninety nine per yeah, a, a lot of them were like nine pound for a glass. Um, that's how you know. That's how bad the pound's doing against the dollar. We're not far now from Kawa Kawa Library. We're planning to spend the night there. It's still absolutely teeming down with rain. It's a free place to stay. Uh, we found it on Wikicamps New Zealand and it's on tarmac. 
which is going to be rather appropriate for the conditions. Right, we've driven past it once, so we're going to see. We drive down, down through the town again, see if we can find it again. So go straight after it then. Is it parking down there? Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Okay. The reason I think... Somebody's just doing a UE down there as well. I'm not sure. It, oh, you might, it might be that you're not supposed to because it's big and red through the middle. You know, for the, you know, for the tram, but hang on. So this is it. So you can see somebody else already parked there. We're, we're about so just keep going straight now. Straight. See where all the things are at the back. Yeah. All the mohos. Oh, okay. So just got to find a, a space amongst those that you you know you can go straight on. Why don't you go straight on to that one just there? Go straight to one of these. That's what I do. Easy peasy. Jackie. Jackie. And like you see, camping. So I'm going to get a video of that. I'm not going to view the river. There, done it. Responsible camping. Wow. So we, we went past it, second attempt we found it, we're here, We've got a lovely view of the river in the rain, the fridge is beeping, let's go and see what the sign says. Due to a popular request um, of how we eat in the van, which has been mainly from my mum, we're showing you tonight our typical meal that we might have. What is it Peg? Pasta. So tonight we're having a lovely tomato -y pasta meal. Yeah. And it's literally just fry up half an onion. I've used the end of a broccoli stalk as well to get some greens in there. And um, a jar of pasta sauce. Boiled up the pasta, put it all together. Bobbed your uncle. Oh, and I've chopped up a bit of cheese to go in there as well. So there you go, there's a recipe that you can use any time you're in your motorhome. It's very simple and only takes about 10 minutes to prepare. Add a dash of wine and it's fantastic. <laughs> Cheers. Right, we've just washed our new glasses for the first time, but one question I have is, can you excuse the sink? <laughs> Pardon the sink. But one question I have is, why do they put those sticky labels on that are virtually impossible to get off? We've literally spent 15 minutes chiseling each label, sticky price tag off each of these glasses. I mean, that's half an hour life we'll never get back. We spent last night in the library car park at Kawakawa, Let's go and have a look out this morning. It's free and we found it on Wikicamps. It may look sunny now, but it's actually been raining most of the night and most of this morning. So it's probably just gone about 9 a.m. now and we're about to venture out. So this is the building behind which we're parked with toilets and showers. Incredible. Just gonna have a quick look at the showers. Ah, uh, can't do it at the moment because somebody's in there. Anyway, ah, uh, showers here. Looks like that's locked as well. Don't think, maybe somebody's in there at the moment. Come back and check that out later. machines in here are controlled by car which is all very convenient for us to do our washing but the actual detergent you've got to pay using a two dollar coin we don't have one so Peg's gonna have to try and see if she can source one from somewhere 
um, and then we'll be able to do our washing today. Turns out that the laundrette doesn't have any detergent, so now before we can even do any washing, we've got to buy some from somewhere. This is uh, a challenge I wasn't expecting. The reality is a motorhome life, hunting for detergent. Yeah. 5 99 for that, cool. It's 5 99 not sure what you get for that. It's about three quid. What? Right, that wasn't too painful. We managed to get some detergent. So uh, about three doors down from the laundrette. Back to the laundrette now. This is where we find out there's no machines available or they're out of order. Or... So again, the currency card has been defeated, so I'm going to have to try one from the UK, see if we can get that to work. He doesn't like the type of card. Yeah, this is unbelievable. I've been going backwards and forwards across the streets here to try and suss this out. There's a guy across the road that could start the machine in the laundrette for us with the money, so uh, let's see if this works. Right, in New Zealand. How oh, was he? Hello. Hello. <laughs> I didn't realise that one. Right, in New Zealand, they use the FPOS card. Now, we don't have one of those cards, and that means that we couldn't start the machine. None of our cards could, would, could use the machine. To cut a long story short, we found out that the laundrette is operated by the bakery across the road. So I went to see them, I gave them $5, and they were able to start the machine remotely from, from over the road. And now we are washings on. Hooray! Hooray! Should we go to the bakery for something to eat? I think we should go to the bakery for something to eat. Now I have to say that the lady in there was not happy with me because she thought I was trying to get in. There was a queue of people and I was going in there in a little bit of a panic saying is it possible for you to start the machine and she said you're gonna to have to wait till I serve all the other customers but she wasn't happy with me but I'm very happy to go back there because it really was me that was at fault so no pro no problem with her whatsoever where are we Peg we're in one of the most photographed locations in New Zealand and what else plus well, loads of people come here just to photograph this particular place Wow, anything else? It's a public convenience. Oh! <laughs> So did we mention that there's a tree growing through the middle of it? So there you have it, the most photographed and tourist attracted toilets in New Zealand. Right, okay, so this is a bit of a harsh lesson here. We've just been to an, into an op shop, which is a charity shop here, and we could have saved ourselves a fortune on various things that we bought. For example, ice cube tray in there was, or two ice cube trays for a dollar. We paid something ridiculous yesterday. Um, could have saved ourselves a fair bit of money. Kawakawa is not just home to the world famous Huntawasa toilets, it's also home to the Bay of Islands Vintage Railway. This Bay of Islands Vintage Railway is unique as it's the only working railway in New Zealand where the trains travel down the state highway. 
and they go right through the middle of a busy town. This railway is volunteer run and the most northerly railway in New Zealand. Peg has suggested we go for a walk this evening. What a lovely idea. Peg, um, you cross the bridge first and I'll follow. Peg, have you ever seen a toilet tree before? I've had toiletries, but I've never actually seen a toilet tree. On this walk, other than a dead fish, a flooded bridge and a toilet tree, not really much has happened, has it? Nothing to note. Nothing, nothing out of the usual. <laughs> The toilets are very good. Um, they come with a shower, self-contained, free for cold water. You need a token for hot water, uh, which is payable in a shop around the corner. Rob and I were really aware that we needed to complete the community chess challenge. We thought we're right by a library, let's go in and ask them. So we went inside the library and said we want to do some voluntary work, explained why we needed to do it and they pointed us in the direction of the Bay of Islands Animal Rescue and particularly summer. Is this our puppy to walk? Ah, uh, and does she like rain? He likes, he likes, he likes, he likes rain. <laughs> he likes barking in the rain. I'm here today with Summer from Bay of Islands Animal Rescue. Uh, Summer does a lot of good work in the area, far more than I'm even aware of, because I know people have been just telling us amazing things about the work that she does. Perhaps uh, Summer can tell us in her own words, really, what Bay of Islands Animal Rescue is all about. Kia ora. Um, Bay of Islands Animal Rescue is all about uh, rehabilitating and rehoming dumped, abandoned and abused animals. Um, and sadly, Northland is far worse than anywhere in New Zealand, in my opinion. I suppose that is because it's my everyday volunteer job. Um, it's crazy. Hundreds of puppies a week, multiple phone calls a day. Um, the housing crisis is real in New Zealand and the amount of people that are having to give up on their trusted and true fur babies. It's heartbreaking every single day. But we are privileged to have this lovely couple traveling New Zealand and popping in to animal, other local animal rescues to give a hand and take some pups for a walk. So we've got Blue going for a walk this morning um, and I've armed them with poo bags and a bag of training treats. So when they come back, my baby will be able to sit, stay, heel, lie down, roll over and paw shake. No pressure, guys. <laughs> um, I'm not sure that we're going to uh, meet Summer's very high uh, standards. Um, can, can I ask you though, Summer, um, how many dogs at the moment are you looking after? Um, we've got over 130 dogs and puppies in care currently. Wow. Now that sounds like quite a lot of expense. I mean, it is... How do you just keep going on that with that kind? Of, is, do you get a lot of um, you know donations that sort yep. of thing? Um, a lot of community support and New Zealand support. We also have twelve horses in the rescue at the moment as well, um, and n numerous cats and kittens. Kitten season hasn't really stopped, nor is puppy season. Um, but we run. We're all volunteers, and we run solely on donations and community grants from community boards and the lotteries and pub charities and we run a 24 7 seven days a week desexing program free to the community anywhere in northland so that's desexing microchipping and vaccinating but 
Amazing. And, and if somebody wants to donate to you, what's the best way that they can do that? Um, you can head over to our website and we've got a PayPal account or our um, Westpac account and we're a charitable trust and we're registered and we can give donation certificates so you can claim the GST back on your donation. Oh, that's amazing. Well, we're really looking forward to walking Blue this morning. Thanks so much for helping us. Good boy, Blue. You were so good. You were so good. I can't believe this one hasn't got a penny. I know, I know. And he was found dumped. We're taking the dog for a walk to help the Bay of Islands Rescue Centre. Blue is very interested in everything that he sees and he's quite strong for a little dog. Um, as Peggy's finding, I don't think she's uh, the one in control here. Summer is truly an inspiration. What she does is just incredible and she just motivates everyone around her. She's just fantastic, isn't she, Peg? Yeah, we were talking to the lady in the vets, who's obviously one of the veterinary nurses there, and I said, do you have anything like the PDSA, the People's Dispensary for Sick Animals? And she said, we have Summer. She said, Summer does everything. She looks after all of the animals around here. And she's also very courageous when it comes to any animals that are being maltreated as well. She'll just go and rescue them. So big up, Summer. What a woman. Yeah, incredible. Um, we you know, really respect the work that she's doing and um yeah we heard how courageous she is and it's uh, it's truly a worthy cause and something that we're really glad to have a very very tiny tiny part in we're very happy to tell you that blue's now got a home but plenty of other dogs need your help if you're thinking of adopting one Brace yourself, because soon as you open it, oh, did it not come out? Oh! Ah. Join us next time to find out where the dice takes us. If you have any questions or suggestions, please write them in the comments section below. And if you liked it, Please like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Thank you.